Hi, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. For this week's guitar lesson, we have an awesome little ragtime blues that sounds great on its own. You don't need any accompaniment, no jam tracks, no other guitar players. Just grab a guitar and you can play along with this. And I'm going to break it down note for note and show you how to play everything. I'm also going to explain the structure behind it, you know, why the chords are working together the way that they are, and give you some ideas for some embellishments off of these chord shapes so that you can apply those to other things beyond just this lesson. So I've got the lesson split into two parts. In this video, we'll take a look at the first half. If you'd like to watch the second half and download the tablature and also access the on-screen tab viewer for this, you can get those things by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP351. All right, so let's take just a few minutes and talk through the chord structure for this, uh, and I'll talk about the key of the song. We're not going to get too into the weeds on chord theory because I know I'd lose a lot of you on this, but um, the song is played in the key of C, but that's really only a starting point. When it comes to improvising, if you had two guitars and one was playing the chords in this and, and you were improvising, you might start off in the key of C because that first chord is a C, but as soon as it goes to the next chord, the song has already changed keys. And every time the song is going to a new chord, it's really changing keys. And you find that in a lot of old ragtime music. Um, you know, it was very interesting at the time. You don't hear that in a lot of modern music. Uh, but it's a nightmare for those of us that are used to just improvising in the key of a song. So you couldn't just necessarily stay in the key of C because the chords are always changing and the key's changing. So jazz players love improvising over this kind of thing, but those of us that are blues and roots based, we kind of tend to pull our hair out for this. So you have to know the chords. But what you're going to learn is you're going to learn um, how to, I'll show you how to play everything note for note, but I'm going to show you these little embellishments that you can get off of the different chord shapes so that when you are playing chords like this in the future, you'll have some ideas for things you can do. And that's really, besides just learning how to play the composition, that's what I want you to try and get out of this. So the song is played in the key of C. Typically, in a in a major in a major key like that, your one, four, and five chords are are major chords. Your two, three, and six chords are minor chords. But in this case, every chord is a major chord. In fact, every chord is a dominant seven chord. So if we were to look at the major scale, every one of these chords would be a dominant seven. And so it sounds kind of weird if I just go through it like that, but that's really what's happening. Um, and so I'll get into that a little more as we go into it, and I'll explain that. I'll, Actually, what's happening is you're, every time you're playing one of these new chords, you're playing the five chord of the chord that's about to happen. That's another way of looking at this. You can also look at that as borrowed chords. But anyway, the song is in the key of C. The first chord is a C chord. Then it goes to the three chord, a major three chord, which is an E. And then it goes to the A chord, which is your uh, six chord, major six. So you have one, major three, major six. Uh, let's just look at those three first. We'll take those. So... The first thing that happens is uh, I play this plug, uh, this C chord that goes, and so what I'm doing, doing a walk up. So it's the open one string, the first fret, second fret, and then I put my pinky on the third fret, first string. And while I do that, I also play the C chord. So it's a C chord with a G in the top of it there. So you have. And then play the whole chord. And then you're going to play two, three, one, two, three. Those are the string numbers. And then real quickly, I'm going to hit the open sixth string, uh, that, that low E string, because we're going to the E chord now. So that's your E note. And then I just shift up and play. Now what is that? That's your E7 chord. If you were to take your uh, D7 chord shape and slide it up two frets, You'd be up here. Now I'm using my pinky since I already had my pinky down on that third fret first string. But I'm here and I play uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. So all together from the beginning we have. And you can already hear what's going on. We got this note, we're walking here, and then we walk up one more for the A chord be your sixth chord and then we go so for that I'm playing an A7 chord it's just a bar chord where I'm barring all six strings on the fifth fret uh, just think your A major chord using the E chord shape out of cage but take your pinky off it gives you that nice seven sound and it's easier chord to play because you've just got two fingers to put down so you have the sixth string 
and then the rest of the chord. So I played it like this. And then I played a little fill lick here. And I want you to remember this lick so that you can use this anytime you're using a dominant seven chord out of this chord shape. So that's the eighth fret second string, fifth fret second string, seventh fret third string, and then you do a hammer on between the fifth fret and the sixth fret on the third string. Real easy to play. Now what are those notes? Well just think about this chord shape and your minor pentatonic scale for that chord. So for A. So you have, right? So that's what I was doing. I was just picturing the, the, that chord shape and a little fill lick out of that chord shape. So you can use that anytime you're playing an A chord now going forward. So from the beginning we have. Now it goes to the D chord or the D7 chord and I'm playing it right here. And then the D7 would be your two chord, but it's a dominant two chord, it's not a minor. And the way that I played that was like this. Really cool embellishment off that chord. Taking advantage of the open one string, that E, e string. But I played the D7 chord. And that, if you were to play a C chord down to first position, slide it up and then add your pinky there to the fifth fret third string. Play the middle four strings. And then while these three fingers are locked into place, your index finger slides up to the fourth fret second string. And you play that note, and then you play the open one string. Then you put your pinky, or put your index finger back down on the third fret second string. So you have. It's a nice embellishment that you can use going forward anytime you're playing a D7. Now obviously if you're playing in another key, that open one string isn't gonna sound good with it. But in the key, uh, for, a, for a D chord, it sounds great. And I use this all the time. A lot of songs will have a D7 chord. It's a very common chord. And anytime I've got that, I try and go to this D7 shape because I have, I've got that open one string that sounds so nice with that chord. And there's all these little things you can do uh, taking advantage of that open one string. That's one of them. Okay, so after that, which would be your major two chord, the song goes to the four chord, which is your F. And so I just played an F, straight up F, and then went, here's another embellishment off that chord shape. So there's your, it's just your E chord shape. You slide it up, capo on the first fret. Now I don't, I don't use my, a uh, bar there on that I, because I don't need that. I'm just playing strings 5, 4, 3, and 2, and 1. So I play the F chord like that and then went so that's a half bend on the 3rd fret 2nd string release 1st fret 2nd string and then middle finger goes down on the 2nd fret 3rd string and you can look at those notes living in that chord shape. So this would be where you, the light bulb goes off. So if we were to play a G chord, you've got that little lick that lives in that chord. So now you can use that lick in any style of music, rock, country, blues. You could... It's a nice little fill and there's all kinds of things you can do with it. So that's what I'm doing. Is playing it down here for the F. Let's back up from the beginning and play uh, all the way up to that point. So we have. Now after that I go back to the one chord, which is the C, but I'm just there for a minute so that I can walk down to the uh, A chord, which is your sixth chord. Now that ha probably is going to sound familiar to you, and I got that from uh, Clapton's version of Nobody Knows You When You're Down and Out. And so he would do this, um, this walk down, and actually he's mimicking what happens on the Beth Bessie Smith original where the piano does that, but it's... It works really well on the uh, the guitar because you're walking down to an open five string. It lets you take your hand off, reposition it. So we play the C chord and then we go to that fifth string and play second fret, first fret, open. So that then I can follow up and play the A7 chord. That's where I'm barring the first four strings on the second fret. I got my ring finger on the third fret, first string. So you have... I find it sounds better on an acoustic, actually, or electric guitar, depending on how you're playing this. But to go back 
and put your and pick those notes closer to the bridge. You get that real trebly bright sound as opposed to you know it kind of gets lost the closer to the sound hole you get. And so that's another little thing you might think about as you're playing something, especially a solo composition like this. Play around with where you put your hand. If you want something to really pop, like a you know stand out a little part, go back here and get your treble tone. And it's the same as your pickups. If you think of a pickup on electric guitar, you know you have those different tones, and that's what you're doing is you're simulating that kind of thing by where you uh, you know where the pick hits the string. Okay, so. Uh, then I'll go back to this D7. So I play the chord. Two, three, one, two, three. That open one. And then we go to the five chord, which is a G. But I don't play the G. I just went like this. Did a walk up to get us back to the one chord. So to do that, I'm barring the, all six strings on the third fret. I'm picking the sixth string. But I'm using my ring finger to pluck the third string. So in this case, on the first one there, my ring or my middle finger goes down on the fourth fret third string. And I do a hammer on there. And think of that as your G chord. It's just strings six and three out of the G chord, the G bar chord. Now we're going to walk it up, just strings six and three. So that's the fifth fret, sixth fret up to the seventh fret. It's a really nice sound. I think I got that idea from Blackbird, the Beatles, you know. All right, so let's back it up from the beginning and we'll play up to that point. Sounds awesome. So now uh, the song repeats and we go through the exact same chord. So now I, I go back to the one chord, but instead of playing it down here, I'm just going to play it up here because I walked up to that. So what I played was it's just a C7 chord. If you know, you can think your C chord, take away your pinky. That's your E chord shape, rather. Take away your pinky and you've got the C7 chord. And I do the hammer on with my middle finger. Notice the strum pattern there. Now I've got that in the tablature. For those of you who are premium members, I've got it all spelled out exactly. But that's, let me play through it slowly on this video, just for those of you that are not premium members, just so you can get a feel for it. It's kind of a back and forth. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, like that. So then I go to the E7, and what I'm doing there is I'm playing that same 7 shape, just like we did for the D7, but we're playing it up here, and I'm playing the 5th string, then doing an upstroke on strings 3 and 4, and then there's a downstroke, and then I play that 3rd string my ring finger comes up here and grabs the sixth string on the seventh fret. So it's like this. So it's got that same kind of vibe like we did over the C chord. In fact, all four of these chords we're about to play, I keep that same one and two and three and four and vibe. So it sounds like this. Now we're going to the A7, same strum thing, but I'm playing the A7 chord, but I've got my pinky here on the 8th fret 2nd string. Actually I don't start with it that way, but I add it like that, so it goes like this. And then we go to the D7, same thing I did over the E7, it's just shifted down 2 frets. Okay, so that's what we played over those four chords, the C, the E7, the A7, and the D7. All right, so from that walk up, we have... Now 
we go back to the F, just like before, same chord format as before. Walk it down to the A7. We go to the D7. The G, actually it's a G6. I threw in my, it's your G7 chord, but I put my pinky here on the fifth fret second string just to give it a little bit of jazz. And then to the C. And that's the point where the song goes to a whole other part, but I'm going to save that for the part two video where it goes into the four chord, back to the one chord, and so forth. Um, uh, so you have, as a premium member, you have access to the tablature, which you can, you can uh, highlight and you can slow down, you can loop it, uh, you can watch the tab and the video of me on, on the screen at the same time, and you have a version of without me talking, so that if you're just wanting to get down and really try and learn this stuff, that's probably the best way to do it. So look into that if you haven't. Um, I'm going to back up and play through this one more time, and then I'll see you in part two where we'll learn the rest of this. Okay, so from the beginning we have... 